I'm live already. Okay. Hey guys, we are live. This is Nikki with That Homeschool Life. I'm coming to you twice in one day, although I said I would come tomorrow. Let me get a drink in. We just came back from the beach. I took a quick shower and um, I said, you know what? Let me just knock out this video for Black History Books for third grade and up. And then I can just not have to upload anything tomorrow. All right, so let's get into it. I'm changing the title to my top five picks, but I have a feeling I'm going to lie about that because I got more than five books right here in this pile. And I got like three piles over here, but just bear with me. All right, so my Black History books, my picks. I'm going to start with novels. I'm just going to run through these. A Long Walk to Water. This is part, uh, this is from the Lost Boys series. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Lost Boys, when Sudan was going through its civil war, you had tens of thousands of boys who were displaced. And this is a short, a relatively short read for um, an upper elementary middle school child. So that's A Long Walk to Water. <laughs> I've got um, Bud, not Buddy. I have two Call the Cot winners. I think they both, no, Newberry winner, sorry. This is for young adults. I have um, by Christopher, Christopher Paul Curtis. I have The Watsons Go to Birmingham, 1963, and Bud, not Buddy, both by Christopher um, Curtis and... Both um, are about um, a 10-year-old boy and just life during that time from his perspective. So uh, this one takes place in Flint, Michigan. And uh, this one, um, they go down to Alabama. So there you go. All right. Um, Muhammad Ali, if you're doing biographies, there is none greater than the boxer world-renowned boxer and um, civil rights champion, Muhammad Ali. I'll, I will leave links in the description box um, in about an hour because I have a lot of books. Um, Brown Girl Dreamy. We read the first couple of chapters and then we put it away to read something else. Let me do this because I'm getting a lot of glare. This is... Um, it, it's, it's, it's won so many awards. We just had so much going on that um, we didn't really get into it. But I think this is, a, especially for girls, it's a, um, a great read, at least initially for us, but just knowing the story for um, young adolescents making that transition and all the things that test them in terms of their faith and prejudice and things like that. Um, Once Upon a Time in Ghana, if you if you love folk tales like Aesop fables, it's hard to find something for older kids. Now this is really for older kids. Like it talks about marriage, uh, weddings, killings. It's definitely for an older set of children. Once upon a time in Ghana, this book has actually won a number of very prestigious awards. We do have some pictures in here, illustrations, but this is definitely um, they talk about kind of adult, not adult, but you know, grown stuff. So for high school, I would say, but great stories. There's a storyteller in here and it, uh, it covers, it's the Herbe, Herbe stories told from five different villages or four different villages. So this is a fun read. Um, all right, now these, I just got these in the mail. I need to do another book haul, Shaka. Y'all know about Shaka, that Zulu man, that Zulu king. So these are graphic novels. These are really, really fun. My son has not read these yet. I'm going to surprise him with these for his birthday. Well, before his birthday. So you have um, The Rise of Shaka. And I'll just show you what this looks like on the inside. Although I will do a review. It gives you lots of information toward the back of the book. I mean, lots of additional information. They even show you... They tell you about dialects and the click sounds, all of that. This, I love this. Um, I think there are only two books in the series. And then you have Shaka when he becomes that warrior and he um, fights back the British. Now, since 
um, going into the fall, we are going to focus on military history and we are going to study warriors and wars. Uh, I put, I got this, this is a new book. I'm sorry, I'm talking so fast. I'm just trying to get through this and I'm hot. This is, oh, this is not the first, this is not the one I'm gonna show you. All right, the Zulu Wars. So the Zulus, um, this is around the South Africa on up to Lesotho, I think that whole region is the large swath of land that the Zulus um, occupied and defended and defended. This book goes over the uniforms, equipment, history and organization of military forces past and present and it gets very detailed if you have a child who is really into battles and wars this is everything they could ever ask for I mean they even go as far as giving you details about different ranks in the army for for both sides they give you formations um, the all the equipment the the stuff that they use to fight with the stuff that they use to just, you know, when they're at camp, it's very, very detailed. As a matter of fact, I don't, let me show you. Um, it goes into, well, they tell you a lot about the Zulus. They even have a whole section just on the construction of their um, arm, of their weapons, which is fantastic. And then uh, they show you some formations, what makes a great formation, uh, basically battle strategy. So that's for the Zulu war, that's called Men at Arms. And then I found the campaign, which is the great Zulu war. Now this, this, this goes over the tactics and strategies and the battle experiences. Like if you wanna do, now this would be great even for high school and I mean, even for college, it's that detailed. You're not gonna be able to see it here. My microphone is in the way, I can't get closer. It goes over battle openings, how the battle started, where they started, and then they show you both sides. They do the orders of battles. You have the British forces over here, they tell you how they started off, and then the Zulu forces over here, and it tells you the progression of their um, battles. And then they also show you. So you can, you this could be a unit study. This is British movements around is Islam Luana. I know I'm massacring the name, but this is how detailed it is. And you also have pictures. You have real pictures that are included throughout. And um, then also some illustrations. But um, you have, there's a lot. There's, there's a lot. You, you could spend a long time for this. I think there are six or seven books in this series. It really breaks it down. So, and this is a new publishing company to me. It's Osprey Publishing. They are new to me, but I am very impressed with their books that they have. They have a number of books in that series. All right, um, now moving on to the more, the troublemakers, as Claude Anderson would say, the troublemakers. All right, so Dirty Little Secrets by, um, Dr. Claude Anderson, who also did Poweronomics, ab about black history, its heroes, and other troublemakers. Now, this is a nice little compendium. If you're wondering about what to get, what to buy first for your library, I recommend compendiums, anthologies, collections, where you get a whole bunch of little information. You can read through it, and then you can figure out, hey, I like this. Let me go get more books about this, okay? Little information. He talks about Denmark VC, Nat Turner. He get, he gives you the real deal information. Uh, gerrymandering of the black boat. So all the little things that were done to black people that um, we don't we don't know about. Roman Catholic Church hid black popes. So this is a very interesting and great little read, and he comes with receipts for this. All right. Um, the philosophies uh, and opinions of Marcus Garvey. Now, this is what we're going to be reading in the fall. Dang, this glare. Maybe if I turn, turn around, turn this way. All right. No, there we go. No, 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 no. Okay. So here we go. The opinions and um, philosophies and opinions of Marcus Garvey, uh, Amy Jack Garvey. All right. Now, out of all the Marcus Garvey books that we have, 
we have the speeches, the selected speeches of Garvey, and then um, Man Without a Hat. I think it's Man Without a Hat. This is my favorite, and this is why I got it to read with my child, because he breaks the book. This is volume one and two. Bear with me, guys. I'm really trying to get through this so you can take notes, but also get on with your life, because I know it's kind of late. Okay, so look here at the table of contents. If you want to know what Garvey thinks about these topics, go right to that page. He talks about education, slavery, government, poverty, power, Christianity, um, evolution, miscegenation, slavery, propaganda. I mean, let me just turn to, what, is, what does Marcus Garvey think about Christianity? Let's go there. No, let's go to education, 17. Okay, so you go, to, you go to that page, education, and he's got three philosophies or opinions about that. Quotable, this could be copy work, or it could be memory work, or it could be an essay prompt. You can, you can really milk this. All these topics, you get all of his opinions. There is there's a, some pictures in here. Wait, I'm trying to get to another section. Look here. So this is pretty, this is thorough. This is very thorough. It talks about um, what he thinks about justice, going for justice, um, what he really thinks about uh, slavery. Just, so this is a good book. We're going, we're going to be using this in the fall. Here you have selected writings of Marcus Garvey. Now, as you can see, when I choose um, my books, I don't do a lot of civil rights books. I do have Martin Luther King books somewhere around here. I don't know where it is, but um, it, it's mainly just about Martin Luther King toward the end of his life when he started to change his mind. You know, when he talked about, I fear I've driven my people, I've integrated my people into a burning house. You know, he started talking about class instead of race. And then, you know, they took him out. The government took him out. So I kind of focus on that part of Martin Luther King and um, not so much the early years. But uh, this one is great if your child does debate or is just interested in great writing. Garvey was an orator uh, that is, I, I don't know of any other person who, has, who can surpass um, his uh, rhetoric and how he spoke. Oh, another book on the lost boys of Sudan. They poured fire on us from the sky. This is a longer read. It's more involved than the long walk to water. And um, it's, read this with your child. I mean, don't have your high, I would say high school, middle school, if your child is, you know, mature enough to handle um, content like this, you know, dealing with war and famine and the things that you do when you're a displaced uh, person. Of course, we've got Malcolm X by Alex Haley. And that could be used for um, a read aloud, just maybe selected passages, or you, that can be assigned uh, work. Now, um, I have whew, Black History. Did I show you this one? Black History in a Nutshell. So again, um, if you're limited, or, if you're limited on funds, or you just don't want to go out and buy a lot of books, I recommend little um, nuggets of information in books. And this is another one. Black history in a nutshell. If anything, I would probably recommend this and this book to get first. And then that's a jumping off point to learn about lots of different people, movements, uh, history. So, oh, let me show you. So it's just all kinds of nuggets. They divide it up in, into different categories and um, the categories are pretty broad but they just give you just so much information about each little category. And it's very updated too. Um, look at this. This one is 2010, 2010 that they're talking about. So the black history um, really goes, it's, it's modern too. You have the ancient names of black people and other history facts. And then they give you that information with receipts, with resources to double check and verify what they have said in here. So this is actually, this is, 
the resources that they um, refer to in here itself is um, very, very good. Um, there is a Mansa Musa, an empire of Mali for the older kids. So again, if they're gonna, you're gonna do a unit study, this would be a great spine to use. And now this one is really just a read aloud. Um, if you have a high schooler, I, I would recommend, you know, you, you read this with them. They came before Columbus by Ivan Van Sertema. If anything, um, just to see some of the images and because everyone, everyone, everyone thinks Columbus discovered America, this um, will tell you what was going on in, oh my gosh, the Glarus, maybe because this book is white. There we go. They came before Columbus. Okay, it talks about the indigenous people that were here and what was going on. So the African presence in ancient America. All right, I'm almost done, guys. I know I said five books, I was lying. Uh, 1001 Things That Everyone Should Know About African American History. Now, this is not a third grade and up book, really. I was just, I had too many books in the first video. But this one, little snippets of information, some with pictures. Let me find some, some pictures. This could be great to do biography studies. This is great as a resource if your child is writing an essay. So lots, of, lots of information. And this goes to the modern day too. I think it goes to like 2005 or something like that. I don't know. Um, okay, two more things, two more books. Oh, I'm lying, but look. All right, Hannibal. This is a series called A Wicked History. It takes a lot of the um, famous people from the past and they give you how they got down, the real get down. They have Julius Caesar, Napoleon, Mary Tudor, Henry V or the Eighth, which the baddest one, uh, Empress Cici and the Chinese Empress. So this is this is a really I really like these little books. They make a great introduction to um, a unit study or to maybe a supplement to your history um, curriculum. Um, something lighthearted, Sail Life by Max Axiom. There's a whole series of books by Graphic Library, all all featuring Max Axiom, the very hot and sexy uh, scientist who works out and eats right. <laughs> but um, this is a graphic novel, and this is great for middle school on up. For the younger sect, you know, they can read through it, but some of the vocabulary might be a little difficult for them because they are scientific terms. But that's um, that series, the Graphic Library series featuring Max Axiom. All right, guys, I'm trying to wrap it up. I, I still have more stuff. I'm not even going to cover right now. Um, oh, Lord, I have one more pile here. Okay, let me go through this really quickly. Black Pioneers of Science and Invention, Lewis Haber. All right. Again, this is a collection of people. You can do a lot with these books. They give you so much bang for your money. You can use this to jump off and learn about um, uh, an inventor or a science concept or something that was discovered. This is a, a great collection to have. 1,000, I'm sorry, 100 amazing facts about the Negro with complete proof by the venerable J.A. Rogers. Um, he is an ancestor that's not showing. Again, I like books that have lots of little nuggets of information, a, a lot of information about history because then you can always go deeper by buying additional books. W.E.B. Um, du Bois or Du Bois. Uh, so this is not something for your child to read. It's mainly for you to read, but what you can do and what I have done um, is I've read about um, Du Bois and Garvey and their Pan-Africanism, you know, uh, you know, discussions, their, um, you know, their dialogue. So if you wanted to do um, a comparison on, say, slavery or whatever, um, bet uh, or Pan-Africanism between Garvey and um, Du Bois, this, um, all you have to do is just read chapter two, okay? If you wanted to talk about or know what, um, 
Dubois or Du Bois thought about um, civil rights. There you go. If you wanted to know what he what he thought about the Harlem Renaissance, um, it's in here. So one thing you could do if you're studying the Harlem Renaissance, maybe you're doing a literature study, you have this book with all the nice pretty pictures and all the people that were instrumental in the Harlem Renaissance, and then read <laughs> his take on what he thought about that. So I so that's it for now. Um, the last one, an anthology of African American writing. I would um, this is definitely a top book. You have all the authors featured. You know, you have all your classic ones. Langston Hughes, Laura Neal Hurston, Maya Angelou. Um, you, you got it all. Elin Harris, Gwendolyn Parker. You just have, you see this list. So you get a lot of exposure to writings of um, some of our great um, authors. All right. So that is it for Black History Books, third grade and up. I do have another stack here. That's the Slavery Chronicles. Um, 21 minutes. All right. I done lost a lot of y'all. Now look, those of y'all that were all in here, you need to come back and watch the uh, the playback because this is not a time to be lazy. You need to get these books or learn about the books and find your way to some of these books. I talked about the the slave narrative the slave narratives. There are 17 books in this series. 17, I'm sorry, 16 states. Texas has two books, so there that's why there's 17 books in the series. I'm not gonna go. Um, into detail with that. I did a book haul, brief little overview on, on those books. Um, if you're into talking about slavery, start with this. Don't start slavery from a, from a position of inferiority and shame. Start it with the slaves who, who were kicking butt, okay? Slaves with Swag by um, Daryl Hinman, okay? Slaves with Swag. And then from there, you can go into the three major um, slave revolts or insurrections in America. And that would be the first one that a lot of people don't know about. That was in 1811. That was the revolt in New Orleans. I believe, I believe it was led by Charles de Londe. And this was, they were influenced by the Haitian Revolution of 1804, led by Duddy Bookman. And in here, they even talk about the Bookman prayer, uh, what Duddy um, said before they went off um, and started the uprising. So you have this one, uh, America Uprising. And Denmark VC, this is the second slave um, rebellion. This was 1822. Now this is the largest one. This one was in um, Charleston, South Carolina. And 9,000 slaves, I, I believe. Yeah, 9,000 slaves, Denmark, VC. The buried story of America's largest slave rebellion and the man who led it. And then the third biggest one everyone knows about, the fires of Jubilee. That would be Nat Turner in Virginia, Southampton, Virginia, to be more exact. I think there were about 500 slaves, but this was 1831. And here, um, Southampton Insurrection has um, a lot of pictures, a lot of, I'm sorry, a lot of illustrations, a lot, well, in the beginning of the book, there, there are a lot. And this is actually um, published by the University of Michigan, which was a state that had slaves. All right, and it's also one of the slave narratives, slave narratives, Michigan is one of the books in the slave narratives. And then um, lastly, and this is the last book, guys, Before the Slave Trade, African World History with Pictures by Robin Walker. Now, actually, out of all the books that I've introduced, get this one first. Get this one first. Robin Walker, can't nobody touch him. His, his research is impeccable. Um, and he's very thorough. He's very organized. You know, I'm going to do just a, a review on this book alone. Because it's important that we know what was going on before the slave trade, okay? And you got pictures, baby. You got pictures. Hello, Supreme Family Garden. Thank you for stopping by. Look at these pictures. Look at you in these pictures. This is Robin Walker before the slave trade. 
and I'm going to, I'm going to do a review on this, just on this. It's a lot of information. So that's it. I'm thirsty. I'm tired. I'm hot. I'm going to go relax. I was out in the sun for three hours, um, but I hope you found some value in this. I wanted to go live so I can get all these books out because if I record it, it'll take me two weeks to edit it. And then, then my, my, my spirit is gone. I don't feel like dealing with it. So that's it. If you like this kind of video and you would like more of these videos, don't forget to hit the, the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload more videos like these. Yeah, 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 the whole spill. But I really thank you for staying with me until the end. And let me know down below in the comment section if there are some books you want more questions about or if you would like me to take a deeper dive. I have no problem doing that. Let me know and I will um, put that together. It would be a live. And that's it. So thanks for hanging out with me. I will see you for the part three series, which is Black history books for us, the educators. Books that we should be reading, whether the actual book or the audio book, so we can teach our children. And some of those are going to be kind of heavy hitting books. And then the fourth book, the fourth video in the series will be um, books for white people and other non-blacks books that they need to be knowing about, that they need to just have on their bookshelves, like White Fragility, uh, Black Labor, White Power, uh, Stamp from the Beginning, books like that. Um, all right, so that's it. If there are no questions, I am out of here. Thank you for stopping by. And don't forget to hit the like button. It helps Google, I mean, YouTube with the algorithms and stuff like that. So, oh, and just a quick shout out, my lovely niece, my little entrepreneur niece, made this beautiful mug for me. It says Queen Bee on it. And it is gorgeous. And if you're interested in that, I will be having my website up with the store and you can place an order for her. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I'll see you tomorrow with part three of this Black History series leading up to Friday, which is Juneteenth, June 19th. All right, guys, bye-bye.